Hi, I'm Rick Maurer. So why do people resist us? Well, I can tell you that it's not because they are born resistors just waiting to destroy our good ideas. Uh-uh. They resist in reaction to something that we say or do. Take this video that you're watching. It's probably fair to say that you clicked on it because you've got some interest in the topic of resistance. But as you begin to watch, let's say that I start using a lot of jargon. Oh, imagine that I toss out phrases from systems theory and sprinkle in lots of psychobabble, and you get lost, and you think, oh, what's the use? And you move on to another website. Or maybe you reacted negatively to something I've already said. Wait a minute. He's saying that people resist in reaction to something? So I might be responsible for some of the resistance I'm getting? I don't think so. I do not like what this guy's implying. And in an instant, you've moved on to spider solitaire. But imagine that you understood all that arcane jargon. By the way, I'm not going to be using arcane jargon. And you might even agree that people resist in reaction to something, but you just don't trust this Rick Maurer guy. You don't know why. You just don't trust him. So you stop listening and move to something else. Any one of those things destroys my chance of influencing you. But if you got all three together, you don't get it, you don't like it, and you don't particularly like me, it's a trifecta of resistance. So imagine that you're trying to get people interested in some big new idea at work. I think you need to pay attention to three things. One, do people understand what you're talking about? Two, do they like it? In other words, are they leaning in? Do they want to hear more? And three, do they trust you enough to even want to listen? When I was writing my book, Why Don't You Want What I Want, I looked for people who were good at influencing others. And I studied executives, managers, project leaders, salespeople, and educators. I found that the people who were pretty consistently good at getting their ideas across understood those three things. Consequently, they didn't get the I don't get it, I don't like it, or I don't like you resistance nearly as often. And their success rate showed it. If you ignore any of those three things, you put your ideas at risk. And it makes no difference if you're trying to influence just one person or a team or a group of a thousand. People need to get it, like it, and trust you. I created a short self-assessment that can help you see how well you pay attention to those three areas of influence. I encourage you to think about one person or perhaps one stakeholder group as you complete the assessment. It'll make it much more practical.